Hi, I'm author Christine Norris, and today I'll be reading to you from one of my books, The Crown of Zeus. This is the first in the Library of Athena series that I've written, which is a series about world mythologies uh, in a little bit of a different direction. It's really about a secret library and s magical artifacts that have been hidden within books in the secret library. There are four books currently in the series. This is from chapter four of this book called Schedules and Secrets. Megan slowly put on her uniform, a blue and gray plaid kilt, white knee socks, white button down shirt and navy blue tie. She picked up her blazer, also navy blue, with the crest of St. Agatha's College for Girls embroidered on the left breast. She pulled it on. She leaned down in front of the vanity mirror to adjust her hat, a wool beret the same color as the blazer. She looked at herself and sighed. <sighs> Ick. I hate uniforms. She already missed wearing whatever she wanted to school. Uniforms, in her opinion, stifled individuality. Little drones that all looked alike, marching along like good little soldiers. I suppose it's not that bad, she said to her reflection. The uniform didn't really flatter her figure, but it didn't make her look dumpy either. She pushed her hat so it sat at an angle. At least it's a nice color. Not really convinced the uniform was in any way better than wearing something from her closet, she grabbed her bag off the chair and went downstairs. Twenty minutes later, her father dropped her off for the first day of school at the front entrance of a building that looked like a castle from the Middle Ages. Hundreds of girls, all dressed like she was, streamed in the front door. Drones. Don't forget, you're supposed to stop in and see the headmistress first. Have a nice day, Meg, Donald said. He raised his hand as if to muss her hair stopped and patted her on the shoulder instead thanks dad you too she kissed him on the cheek opened the door and dove into the sea of bodies headed inside after being jostled and bounced down the halls she finally found her way to the headmistress's office and knocked a woman's voice called out come in megan opened the door the room was small and neat Three walls were covered with portraits in heavy wooden frames, men and women dressed in black robes, mortarboards on their heads. The fourth, opposite the door, was taken up by a large window that arched upward toward the peak, like the window of an ancient cathedral. In front of the window sat a desk. Behind the desk sat a middle-aged woman. Her dirty blonde hair was pulled back in a severe, sensible-looking bun. She was hunched over the desk, engrossed in paperwork, but looked up when Megan entered. She had a thin face with a small, pointed, upturned nose, delicate cheekbones, and round blue eyes. Can I help you? Uh, yes. Megan squared her shoulders and tried to stand up straight. I'm Megan Montgomery. I'm a new student, and this is my first day. They said I had to report to you. The woman shuffled through the papers on her desk and pulled out a manila folder. Yes, of course. The girl from America. Well, come in, child. Don't look in the doorway. Please sit down. A thick burgundy rug muffled Megan's footsteps as she walked to one of a pair of high-backed chairs in front of the desk. She tried to look graceful as she sat down. Welcome to St. Agatha's. The woman gave a smile that reminded Megan of a cat who just found a juicy mouse. She folded her hands on the desk, straightened, and looked Megan in the eye. I am Miss Spencer, the headmistress. Nice to meet you. Miss Spencer nodded. Since you are from America, you are probably not familiar with our British education system. You are 13, correct? Yes, ma'am. Megan had never called anyone ma'am before, but Miss Spencer looked like someone whom she should. I'm in the eighth grade. Miss Spencer's smile widened a bit, but it was still a smile that looked put on for company. It's yes, headmistress. And we don't have grades here. You are in third year. The mistress, headmistress picked up the file and walked around to Megan's side of the desk. I've looked over your transcripts and everything appears to be in order, but I must warn you, Miss Montgomery. Here, things are going to be much tougher than they were at your old school. This institution is a tradition among many families from all over the world. The world? Megan asked. Do their families all move here so they can go to school? Miss Spencer laughed like a parent whose small child just did or said something cute and silly. No, no, of course not, dear. Some, like you, are day students, while others live in our dormitories. We pride ourselves in turning out the finest young ladies. To that end, you will be taking more subjects than you are used to, including Latin. Uh, Latin? Who speaks Latin? 
Yes, as well as music, math, world history, science, literature, philosophy, geography, and art. You will also be in a house. She flipped open the file. I've placed you in Whitmore. Your house contains about 20 girls from each year. Your head is Professor Livingston. She teaches history. If you have problems in school, academic or personal, go to her. Each house meets twice a week for tutoring and study. Uh, I see. Megan's stomach felt as if she would drop out of her feet at any moment. All those classes plus forced study? She had her own, held her own at her own school, but she wasn't exactly a straight-A student. I'm in trouble. I noticed you played hockey at your old school as well, Miss Spencer continued, oblivious to Megan's nervousness. You might try out for the house team. It's one of the best in the, in the county. If you enjoy horses, we all have an exceptional equestrian team. I'll run right out and sign up for that. Not. She handed Megan a sheet of paper. Here's your schedule. I suggest you get to class. The late bell is about to ring. Megan took the paper and looked it over. Thank you, headmistress. She slung her bag over her shoulder and walked to the door. She wondered what would happen if she just kept running right out the front door. <sighs> Her first class was literature. She found the classroom and opened the door. A stern-looking man with slicked-back hair, dark hair, turned and stared at her with small black eyes. May I help you, he drawled. His pasty face wore a look of utter distaste, as if he were wondering who dared interrupt his class. Uh, uh, yes, sir. My name is Megan Montgomery. I'm new. She handed him her schedule. He glanced, sniffed, and handed it back to her. Ah, uh, uh, yes, very well, take a seat, and do not be tardy to my class again. Megan felt her cheeks get hot and thought about telling him it wasn't her fault. She was late, but decided against it. She found her a desk at the back of the room and took out her textbook. From one of the desks to her right, she heard a snicker. Miss Montgomery? Ye yes, sir. Do not expect special treatment because you are new or because you are from America. I expect you to keep up with your classmates. Yes, sir. She slumped into her seat and tried to make herself as small as possible. The rest of her first day was much the same. The classes were certainly different than at her old school. For one thing, students were expected to stand when they gave an answer to a question. Her teachers were not Mrs. or Mr., but Professor. Most of them were very strict and demanded much more than her previous teachers. Her schedule was packed. First day alone, she had world history, intermediate math, Latin, and philosophy in addition to literature. Most of the teachers preferred, referred to her as the American girl several times before remembering her name. They all piled on the homework. At lunch, she sat alone because, of course, she didn't know anyone, and no one offered to sit with her. She saw the pointing and whispering that went on. Most didn't even try to hide it. Megan worked to hold it together, but it was hard to ignore the fact that she was on display like some kind of freak show. She picked at her lunch, unable to eat, and sympathizing with every new kid she had ever seen at her old school. I want to go home. She meant New York. After school, she stood on the front steps of St. Agatha's waiting for her ride home, wondering how much a one-way plane ticket from Heathrow to JFK cost. She was miserable and had a ton of homework. Her backpack felt like it was going to rip her shoulder off. She shifted her bag to the other shoulder and watched a group of six girls clustered nearby. She had seen a couple of them in her classes and was pretty sure they were in her year, but she didn't know any of their names. She watched out of the corner of her eye as they whispered intently among themselves and sent furtive, glass, furtive glances in her direction. She couldn't hear what they were talking about, but she sure knew who. Just like at lunch. Don't they have anything better to do? She allowed this to go on for a few minutes, pretending to be oblivious to their whispering. Finally, she'd had enough. She whipped her head around and marched over to them. Excuse me. She walked right up to the tallest girl. Is there a problem? Three of the girls turned bright red, took a few steps back, and slunk away, their heads down, leaving their three co-conspirators behind. Proper English girls don't gossip, do they? Megan gave a wide smile that dripped with sugar. There's no problem, is there, girls? The tall one said in a flat tone, still toe-to-toe -to -toe with Megan. Well, I think there is. Megan's smile was gone now. You've all been giggling and talking about me behind my back. Care to share? The girl licked her lips. We were just wondering... About what? My accent, my shoes, or my hair, maybe? The other girl pushed a lock of her own straight black hair behind her ear, unfazed. Um... No, actually, we were wondering about your house. It was Megan's turn to step back. My house? Oh, I I'm in Whitmore, I think. 
The girls giggled. Megan felt like she had missed the punchline of a joke and her cheeks burned. No, no, not your academic house, your house house. You know where you live? You want to know about my house? The third girl, a pretty blonde with loose shoulder-length curls, pulled her Burberry purse up higher on her shoulder. You do live in the big manor house on Napford Road, right? The, the Paragon? The Parthenon, Megan corrected. What about it? It wasn't the conversation she'd expected, but she was kind of happy they were actually talking to her. The dark-haired girl pursed her lips and narrowed her eyes, seeming to choose her words carefully. We wanted to know whether or not you've seen anything, anything strange since you've been there. What do you mean strange? Like African artifacts strange or like bad decorating strange? Oh, oh no, nothing like that, the second girl said. She pushed her thick glasses up her long nose and gave a furtive look around like ghosts, unhappy spirits roaming about the halls at night. Megan almost laughed out loud. No. Why would you think that? The stories about that house are sort of a local legend, the tall girl said. She gave the other two a superior look. I never believed any of them, but... Oh, Rachel, come off it, said the blonde. You were scared witless of my grand told you that story. What story? Megan crossed her arms over her chest and relaxed. Rachel hesitated. The one that says the ghost of that crazy old man who used to live there haunts the place. Sir Gregory? You think the ghost of Sir Gregory haunts my house? Why would you think that? Those girl, these girls are nuts, Megan thought. Out of their minds. But hey, they're talking to me, right? She wondered for a moment if they were keeping her busy long enough for someone to take a, tape a kick-me sign on her back. It was what the kids at her old school would have done to a new kid. In a heartbeat. They say he was murdered right there in his own bed, the blonde girl said, and that his spirit walks the halls all night looking for the killer. My grand says he's guarding something, something no one has ever been able to find. A great treasure hidden in the house or on the grounds. That's why he was killed in the first place. His ghost keeps people away. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Megan didn't believe in ghosts, of course, and she didn't know how Sir Gregory had died. But it was nice to have a conversation with someone her own age. If she could keep the conversation going, maybe they could talk about something less weird. Rachel's face was serious. That's why the house has been empty for so long. She smiled, then snorted a laugh. <laughs> it's all a right bunch of rubbish, if you ask me. Yeah, it is, Megan said. I've been there for days and haven't seen a ghost. Honestly, the blonde said. Really? How ridiculous is that? Ghost? There's no such thing. Megan clucked her tongue, and the words came out before she really thought about them. But if you want to see for yourselves, you're welcome to come and visit. The invitation served two purposes. First of all, she wanted to see their reaction to be invited to a haunted house. Second, she had surrendered to the fact that she was not going back to New York anytime soon. She couldn't take another day like today, so maybe if she was friendly, she'd have someone to hang out with. The girls paled. The one with the glasses was suddenly interested in something on her shoe. Rachel, however, kept her gaze steady with Megan's. All right, then. I'll come. She pushed out her chin. Just tell me when. How about this weekend, Megan said. Uh, just let me clear it with my dad. Fine. I'm Rachel Cuthbert, by the way. She extended a hand. This is Claire McElhenney. The, the girl with the glasses gave a nod. We're both in Whitmore, by the way. This is Harriet Darrow. The blonde raised her hand and waggled her fingers. She's in Benson. And you're Megan Montgomery, Claire said. That's right. So do all of you want to come over this weekend? We can make it a slumber party. She tried to look serious, but a giggle in her voice gave it away. Maybe we can have a seance. Rachel and Claire gave Claire and Harriet a look that said they'd better not refuse. Yes, we'd love to come, Claire said. Thank you. There was an awkward silence. Look, we're sorry about all that before you know. Rachel said the whispering and all. It was rude. A car horn beeped. Megan glanced over her shoulder. Her dad sat behind of the wheel of their rental car, waving. She turned back to the girls. If she was going to do this, make friends. She couldn't hold a grudge. She swallowed her pride. It's okay. Forget it. That's my dad over there, so I gotta go. I'll let you know tomorrow about this weekend. It'll be fun. Rachel smiled. See you tomorrow, then. That's all that I'm gonna do. This is The Crown of Zeus, book one of the Library of Athena, available from the publisher on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and at any independent bookseller, you can order it.
Have a great day. Bye.